25, 2020, the death of George Floyd at the hands of Minneapolis police spawned a racial reckoning across the country. That same day, though, more than a thousand miles away, another racist incident was also a part of that tipping point. You, re you may remember Christian Cooper, who was birding in Central Park when he asked a white woman, you see her there, to put a leash on her loose dog. And in response, she called 911 to falsely claim she was being threatened by, quote, an African-American man. She also then pretended she was crying, but we'll just leave that aside. That woman lost her job and was charged with filing a false police report. And now Cooper is telling his story in his own words. And joining me now is Christian Cooper, New York Times bestselling author of the new book, Better Living Through Birding, Notes from a Black Man in the Natural World. And he's also the host of the National Geographic show, Extraordinary Birder. Christian, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Jonathan. So th there's a chapter in the book devoted to the incident in Central Park, and I'm gonna quote from it. You say, I, ha I don't have to go all the way back to Tulsa and Rosewood and Emmett Till to know what it means for a white woman to accuse a black man and who would likely be believed. This was potentially a world of trouble heading my way. In that moment, Christian, when Amy Cooper called 911, how fearful were you of a potentially horrific outcome? Because just watching it, for when I saw the video, um, I was afraid for you. As I said, you know, I knew that this was potentially a lot of trouble, but I also recognized that um, whether she was conscious of it or not, it was an attempt to intimidate me racially to comply with her wishes to not, no longer be recorded by, on my cell phone. And so I, that presented me with a choice, which was, okay, do I capitulate to that or do I insist that I am not going to be complicit in my own dehumanization and just keep doing what I'm doing, whether I'm, I would be black, white, brown, or green, and that's ultimately what I chose to do. And I'm, I just you know, kept recording mm -hmm. until that dog was on the leash, and she had to do what she wanted to do in response, mm -hmm. and that would be on her. So. But you know what? One thing you didn't do you made the decision not to participate in any of the prosecution of Amy Cooper. Why? A sense of proportionality. Um, it was a hard call. I, I was very conflicted about that because, you know, there was a legal point to be made, a precedent to be set. But on the other hand, her life had imploded. Um, it seemed like piling on. It was a political year. And so it seemed like there was a dimension to that. People were sending her death threats. It just seemed like, and more importantly, it wasn't a matter for me to decide whether or not the prosecution would happen. That was on the prosecutor. He could pursue it whether or not I participated or not. If he needed my cooperation, he could subpoena me and I would comply. Mm. But um, I just felt like, you know what? Her life has, has imploded. If someone doesn't look at that already and see that, wow, this is maybe something I should not do, I don't know that any sort of legal action is going to change their behavior. Mm -hmm. You know, Christian, I'm sure you know this, since the incident in Central Park, more black people have gotten into birding. There's now even a Black Birders Week. Uh, what, what does it feel like to see more black people getting into birding, something usually considered a, a very white activity? Well, it is a very white activity. I, I used to joke when I was a kid, because I've been birding since I was about nine or 10 years old, you know, that uh, you know, if you counted all the black birders in North America, you could do it on one hand. <laughs> Happily, that has been changing, even before my incident. Um, but one of the things I hope with the book, and especially with the TV show, is that a lot of young black and brown kids will see this TV show with a host who looks like them and suddenly maybe it'll be possible for them to imagine themselves birding and to get out there and do it. So it's changing, it has been changing, and I'm hoping this will only accelerate the change. You know, I, I, in reading your book, you, you give these tips to people um, through as you're telling the story about birding. And one of the tips is it, when, you hear, when you hear a sound, when you hear the, the bird chirping or whatever the term of art is, because I'm, I'm not a birder, you say, Keep walking until you find it. Until you find it. Yeah. And I'm, <laughs> if you're trying what? to learn burn songs, don't listen to recordings because it'll all become a mismatch right. in your head. Right, right, right. No, what you want to do is when you hear something you don't recognize, spend the time to track it down because then you'll hear that bird singing the whole time. And then when you finally see it and see the mouth going and the tail bobbing, yeah. then you associate that sound with the memory, and then it sticks. 
Yeah, I wish we had more time to keep talking about the birding aspect uh, of your book. But um, you are you are a long time advocate and, and activist, <clears throat> excuse me, um, in the LGBTQ community. Mm -hmm. um, Pride Month is over, and the Supreme Court um, found it uh, necessary on, to, the last day of Pride on Month. the last day of Pride Month to issue that unbelievable case in Colorado. Just your thoughts on, on the Supreme Court's decision, but also where we are as a nation, because the Supreme Court did what it did in an environment where there are more than 500 anti-LGBTQ plus bills around the country and 70 have gone into law. I'm more interested in what we're gonna do in response. And it's up to each and every single one of us, whether we are queer or straight, whether we are trans or cisgendered, whether we are black, brown or white, to make our voices heard that this will not stand, that we support each other and we support equality for everyone. Um, and if we do that, then we'll start to change the culture and push it in the right direction so that this damage that the, that the Supreme Court has done can be undone. That is um, actually a positive way to, to look at what happened because, you know, we do have an, the ability to course correct. It takes time, though. It, it's, it's the work that's on all of us. And I think too many people look at what happens and think, oh, the Supreme Court has done this. There's nothing I can do. Nonsense. There is a tendency of people to abdicate the, pow the power we all have as individuals. And we need to re recognize that we have that power and we need to use it. That is exactly right. Christian Cooper, thank you so much for coming to the Saturday show. My pleasure.